Coyote. We're in Cape Le Grand National Park. We're at Lucky Bay, uh, which is fairly close to Esperance in Western Australia. Uh, one of the locals here told us that Lucky Bay is called Lucky Bay because you, if you catch a fish, you're lucky. So apparently the fishing isn't particularly red hot. But today we thought we'd try a bit of land-based fishing. So we're going to go for some calamari or squid off of the rocks. So the rig I've got set up here is a bit different because it's basically two squid jags. So I've got a small one up a little bit higher and then I've got a larger one down the bottom. Now that top one may tangle a bit too often. We'll see. Uh, we may take that one off. But we'll see how we go. Okay, so this is the spot. Um, that little spot down there, probably not ideal. It's got a wave running over it and these are granite rocks and they can get a bit slippery. So the idea for me is to cast down to there a long way and let the jigs settle and then just tease it in. Uh, but when I get fairly close to the rocks, fairly sharp drop off so it's not too bad but when I get close to the rocks I'll lift the rod tip up and I'll wind and get the jag on top of the water and make sure I don't get it caught on the stuff on the bubble weed and so forth on the edge down there. So alright first half. Squid. Point it at me. I'm not, and things pointing out the bottom. <laughs> Alright, open the lid and we'll drop him in. I was just pulling my squid jag in. I hooked it up on the bottom and I had a small amount of weed, so I was just winding it in rather quickly. And another fish came up and grabbed it. So I suspect there might be what we call Tommies, or over here in Western Australia they call them herring, uh, or maybe a salmon trout or something like that. So I've put on a metal lure and we'll give that a go. Okay, I did catch a small Tommy. Oh, bloody hell. There you go. And I had to drop down to a much smaller lure. And the technique is actually to cast out and go a little bit slower. I was going flat chat, which works often for salmon and quite often for these little fellas as well. But um, yeah, just a bit slower with a jerky motion. All right, we'll see if we can um, catch one on um, camera or while filming. So I'll cast out, I'll lower my rod, I wind slowly and then just pull, just to let the lure stop for a second. That gives the fish half a chance to grab hold of it. So here we go. Without falling in. That was a strike. Oh, that was a strike. Okay, so again on my small little lure. They call this a short finned pike or a schnook. Personally, I don't like eating them, so I'm not going to keep this fella, so I'll put him back. fishing for the day we ended up with only two tommies the rest of them kept falling off and one decent squid um, today was fairly typical about just changing your technique to suit the condition so once I noticed that the tommies were having to go up my squid jag then I flicked over to a lure so I happened to bring some lures 
we have a look up the beach here, some guys from the caravan park are just casting floats out and catching Tommies off at the beach. Okay. I'm going to quickly go through cleaning a squid. So he's in the bucket, so I'm going to uh, tip the water out and tip the Tommies out, and then I'll clean him on the lid. So, so he's a good sized squid. First thing we do is basically is we pull the head and the guts out of him. So there is a backbone in here, and so all you do, get in nice and close, pull that away from the backbone. You get your finger in, get it down as far as you can get it, and then with a bit of luck, that should just all pull out in one go. He's a bit slippery. Okay. Just grab rolling in my bucket at the moment. So that's effectively the head and the guts. The truth is you can eat all you take all this gut stuff out and all of this meat through here. You can eat, you can chop the tentacles off and you can eat them as well. These things are nice to eat, but they're also really really good bait. Okay. So the next thing is to get your finger in between the flap and the body and you just push your finger into it until you poke a hole through it so you run it up to the top and run your finger through to the bottom and what I've done is I've got between the flap and the skin if you can see that now the other flaps exactly the same you just get your finger in between it you pull on the flap off of the body you run it up and down, and you take it to the end, and what happens is the skin's still all attached, and flaps then come away from the body, like so. And that's actually skinned on the outside, other than a few little bits there. What I generally do is I keep these bits for fishing bait, and then what we do is eat the body. So the next part is getting out the backbone. This the backbone looks like a clear bit of plastic. Again, you just get your fingers in underneath it and pull it through and pull it out. It's, uh, it really is just like a clear bit of plastic and feels like a bit of plastic. It's rather strange. At this point, I'll just go wash it off and get rid of a bit of the muck. Always the hard part most people think about the squid is you've got all this goo in the inside and you can see all the squid ink and all that sort of stuff and they say, oh, let's cut this open and then you can make flaps out of it. But a lot of people like squid rings. The easiest way to do it is to actually, it's a bit fiddly to try and do it, but once you get the hang of it, you've effectively you've got to get your finger and push the point in, like so. Once it's in, Keep pushing it through and eventually it comes out the other way. And then all of these things you just clean off in the water, you just pick them off in the water. And then you're left with a little tube, so I'll just clean these off and I'll show you the final product. So there you have it, that's the tube nice and clean both inside and outside so we'll give it another clean off before we 